I'm Anant Gupta and I'm doing my master's in computer science at Courant Institute at NYU University. And I did my undergrad in computer science as well from VIT University uh, in 2014. And then I worked for a couple of years, uh, first as a software developer at Zomato, where I was uh, responsible for building the online food ordering system for the web, uh, the initial version. And then I worked for another startup for like four months and then worked on my own product uh, in Bangalore for about an year. And then um, I basically, I was interested in machine learning from beginning, like around 2013 during my master's, uh, during my undergrad. And then I realized I got to do like, you know, pursue further studies and do a master's in machine learning and do research. So I basically, uh, you know, went back home, started working in machine learning, doing open source projects and then apply for masters uh, in spring which is not usual and then uh, i came here in january last year and then i'll be graduating in december this year and i had a lot of fun doing masters over here it was 320 and TOEFL was 113 so it was like decent enough so i think my rest of the app my rest of the profile really played a role in getting uh, you know admits in the universities I don't really remember the split because I gave my uh, GRE in 20, 2013 or 24, 2013, I guess, um, because I was applying for master's back then as well. But uh, the reason I did not go for master's because during my last semester, I was doing an internship and I really liked working, you know, as a software developer and I really liked the office culture. So I was like, you know, let's just stick here for some time. And but uh, for preparing for GRE, um, I was using this this, this uh, service called GRE Edge. So it, it's based in Chennai, I guess. And um, so they have a nice portal where you can like you know do on do quizzes weekly. And um, I think uh, you know just like apart from studying, you know practice tests helps a lot. You can you know the more you practice, the more you are uh, you know uh, you get accustomed to you know not just the content but like you know how time management and how if you get nervous or like how much time you spent on which questions and which you should ignore and things like that so i think that's really important apart from just knowing the content in the first place for gi preparation and um, once you do your gi preparation uh, i think toefl goes hand in hand because you just need like one more week to just brush up on your toefl basic specific skills just like practice a bunch of toefl tests uh, i'm pretty sure if you've done your gi you'll know what the content is and I think TOEFL is just like, you know, a side thing and GRE is like the main thing which you need to focus on. And I think especially the time management and which questions to, you know, solve fast and like how to approach them. So I applied in spring and uh, interestingly, spring doesn't have many admits open. And uh, since I had to, you know, I was, I had a very specific filter of doing just machine learning and deep learning. I only applied to colleges which had such kind of a research environment and infrastructure. So it just turned out to four colleges, which was NYU, because uh, if people do not know NYU and Facebook AI go hand in hand, because NYU is one of the places where deep learning was, you know, instigated or, you know, one of the first deep learning systems got to work and all the researchers and experts are here. And then I applied to Columbia, which has a machine learning track, uh, but Columbia is for like one and a half years of master's. And then um, I applied to University of Massachusetts Amherst, which is pretty good as well. And then I applied to University of Southern California. So I got in all the four, but then I was really, uh, I had to decide between uh, NYU, Courant, and then Columbia, because Columbia has a 6% intake rate, as they mentioned in the acceptance letter. But then um, I did a lot of analysis on so the way I chose my school was I did spend two weeks just doing research on where to go. And I looked everything in like, you know, the basic stuff, like how's the life, how is the, you know, living thing, how is the, you know, uh, how do you, what's the job scene or like how many opportunities do you get? But I think what people ignore or people uh, don't overlook is uh, what kind of, you know, people out there in those universities, what kind of professors or PhD students are there, which which is something really matters because, you know, once you're in the university, all that is fine. Like, you know, the living conditions, everything is fine. But what really matters is what kind of opportunities or if you're into research or even just, you know, projects and stuff, uh, 
what kind of people can you get to interact with or work with so uh, so i think so i mailed many phd students uh, and master students asking them what's the research scene what is the research opportunity and that's how i uh, you know got to decide which to, where to choose and i'm really glad i chose nyu over columbia because uh, i have some of the classes in deep learning over here and people actually travel from columbia like for 30 minutes and come over here to attend those classes it helped me make that mental filter that you know if you are getting a GA score of this much this these universities must be in your ambitious and these universities are safe and things like that and apart from that i yeah i think the most help i got from york it was to you know read profiles of people who are already there and also i think i used the uh, the tool which where you give the criteria and stuff like that and it, it shortlists it shortlists the universities for you which is really cool and which is really helpful and I think people should, you know, use that more. And I think, yeah, it's really great because uh, in today's day, there is like so many things, so many criteria you can apply to and a tool like that can help, really help you like, you know, clear the noise and, you know, focus on what's important. So basically NYU is like a university. Uh, it's a university with multiple colleges in it or institutes in it. And so you have like, medical school and Stern Business School and Quran Institute of Mathematical Sciences is a math and computer science institute. Um, and there is something called Tandon Engineering School, which is in Brooklyn. And there is a NYU Data Science Center. So if people are interested in machine learning and data science, I really recommend people to you know, apply to NYU Data Science Center because they, it's, like, it's, it's like a couple of years old and like it's co actually called like one of the best data science institutes in the US. Um, and they have like lots of free food and free event and they're like companies coming up and, you know, giving you talks, Facebook and media, everyone comes all the time. And Quran uh, is like a heritage school, I'd say, because it's like uh, even from the times of World War II, mathematicians like John Nash and, you know, all the Nobel Prize winners or mathematics, like all the great mathematics was born here. So it's like um, if you're like taking courses and there is some math, the professors actually tell you that you know this was made at Quran, this was invented Quran, and the professor sits like two floors above of you, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, Quran or Center for Data Science both are equally good uh, if you want to do computer science or machine learning. So I came in spring, so it's like you get two summers, and in the first summer you can't do an off-campus, you know, you can't do an internship because it's like you have to work only on campus for ten first ten months. So my first, uh, so I had actually two internships. So the first internship was on campus and the second was off campus. So the first was on campus in the sense that uh, I did work as a machine learning engineer, but at NYU Langone Health, which is like the medical school of machine learning, and sorry, medical school of NYU. And fun fact, uh, malaria, the cure for malaria was invented at NYU Langone. Um, but anyways, so, I got to know from a PhD student that there is an opening. So I was just like randomly talking to a student and asking for you know any opportunities in machine learning for summer. I've been like working in just some projects, anything. And she told me that you know there is they are they are looking for people um, uh, at the health center at the medical institute. So I went there and surprisingly, even though it's a medical school, they have a very big department for you know people doing you know data science and machine learning and so they like my profile and they then they called me after three weeks um and they it had it was a proper machine learning based interview as in like you know what did you make what have you done earlier you know what issues did you have in your projects what do you like uh you know best and then you know they went through my online open source projects which i think uh, so, I mean, my advice is like, just if you're if you're into coding and software development, make things make things open source with good documentation. It really goes a long way in helping you. So, so I worked over the summer, uh, which was with you know patients' data and predicting you know which patient would fall sick eventually, depending on the previous information of visiting the hospital. And it was really interesting because I worked with real world data, and then. Um, in my second semester, I continued working as a part-time on-campus, continue working part-time job over there as an on-campus, you know, job. And then after that, uh, uh, I like I 
felt like I was done with the project. I was getting kind of bored. So um, I took another on-campus job for the next semester, which was a grader position or like a teaching position, uh, TA position for one of the courses which I had taken previous semester. So it's like I done well. So the professors are, you know, looking for students and they, he mailed me that, you know, there's an opening. Would you like to come and be a TA? So I did that. I was a TA for, sorry, grader for NLP. And then um, coming to my second summer, which was my actual off-campus internship. So I was applying for, um, you know, internships and um, my constraints were pretty strict that I had to be in any kind of machine learning or deep learning role. Um, because honestly, I hadn't worked, like done a software engineering, like a data structure algorithm practice in years. So, um, so I was I applied to like seventy companies, and um, it's I'd say it's pretty competitive, and the bar is really high for machine learning. Uh, I'm not sure about software development, but so the most companies which reply back are usually startups, um, because I think getting your application through a big company in the, you know, it's like it's like they receive a lot of applications. So getting your application through is like a really tough thing. I mean, apart from referrals, I'm not sure how you can get your, get someone to notice your application in big companies, or at least I guess you can meet a recruiter in an event or something. But yeah, but even in startups, the interview process was um, really, you know, really strict. They had like around five, four or five interviews where they asked really, you know, it's not like you can just get by. You have to really study your math and deep learning, the deep learning book, and you know really know your stuff to get through. And um, so within, so during all this interview time, which was uh, I'd say which, which was really hectic, um, I had done a project uh, in in a class called computer vision, and which is mostly deep learning as well. Um, and the professor, since I had done well, the professor offered to refer me to one of the startups he advises, which was one of by his PhD students. So that, that was great. And since the professor was, you know, referring me, um, I got a call back pretty soon. And then uh, they directly called me for an on-campus uh, interview, on, uh, on-site interview, which was fortunately in New York as well. So I did well there. And usually these sorts of interviews also have like a one week long pro programming assignment where they give you uh, an open problem to solve and they don't usually look for the answer but they look for uh, how well you can do it or like what's your you know approach or like how well can you document things and stuff like that so i wasn't able to actually solve the problem but the way i described my method, method methods and um in the document, like, you know, I applied model one and this and that. They really liked it. And um, so I've, actually I was applying for full-time job. The, so they were looking for someone full-time. So they were like, okay, this seems fine. We, we took the first two rounds. We can give you an interview and then we can give you an internship and then we'll see uh, after that. So yeah, so after so many interviews, uh, once I got this internship, I, I was, I. I started like focusing on my academics, back to my academics, and then I stopped interviewing at more places. And this was a really good internship position. It was machine learning um, research engineer, and they had some really, uh, you know, really intelligent people on the team. So that that's how I got the internship. And my internship my internship experience was really uh, mind blowing. I'd say. I mean, I. I knew I had to like get this job somehow. So I like worked day and night and then uh, um, ended up doing like completing the project and then um, getting a research paper done uh, because it was kind of a research paper work. But I also built a, like a software system which, you know, shows that how the system works. And then my paper got accepted uh, in a conference called NIPS, which is like, uh, one of the prestigious machine learning conferences, conferences like, I mean, the attendees tickets like get sold out within 10, 10 minutes. This it sold out 10, 10 minutes this year. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, I accepted the job offer from them, which they eventually offered. But yeah, so I mean, I'd say a lot of the, uh, the thing about it that was involved uh, in this was like the projects that I did over the course and the research work that I did. 
apart from just like you know studying for the interviews and applying for jobs because i applied for like a couple of big companies as well this year and then this semester and then um uh it's like even if you like have a referral they have a really high bar and uh, specifically for my field uh, they only prefer phd's so i think um, so yeah it's like you really got to do your homework first uh it's called imagine technologies it's a it's a startup but it works with uh, ai and radiology um helping make you know re diagnostic helping reduce diagnostic errors so we work with uh, the lot of people in they're like eight people in the ai team people from like stanford and princeton and um there are like also multiple doctors involved in the company as well i think i think the media uh, only covers a very narrow aspect of what's out there in the field and it's often misleading um so i'd just say whatever you read in the media just take it with a grain of salt it's like just uh, boil down the hype to like 90% like 10% down um because there are like so many things that can be done in uh, in machine learning and we are yet pretty far from uh, you know do like building things which you see in movies um self driving cars sure i mean the technology is there i interviewed with multiple with multiple companies doing self driving cars and um right now it's a very engineering centric problem rather than an ai based problem because right now you have the systems for you know detecting people on the road and things like that but you aren't very uh, you know sure about how fast your car can react or what kind of decisions to make whether to save the baby or to save the dog or things like that but i mean uh the technology wise there's a lot of work to be done and it's pretty exciting and the problems in the field never go down as like and there people even people from other you know people from art and people from other disciplines are coming to you how, see how they can use machine learning so i think it has a very long future and apart from just the technology there's involvement of uh, things like uh, privacy laws ethics and all that even all the institutes are like coming in to see how they can you know contribute in making machine learning better in the long run uh, having said about the future i'd say if a person uh, wants to get into machine learning uh, either do a phd or even if you want to do like a research engineering kind of position you must at least have you know go back to your undergrad classes you know make sure your math is correct make sure linear algebra and statistics are you know on point and um because coding is uh, if you are like a good software engineer i think machine learning coding you'll be good to go because things are pretty easy uh but yeah understanding the concepts of how things work and understanding how things like back propagation works and able, being able to do it on paper is what will you know separate you from the rest of the crowd when you're giving your interviews and things like that you know for all the people out there who are studying or thinking about doing masters or not or what you got to do i mean uh whatever you whatever you want to do you want to do a job in india it's pretty good as well if you want to do master it's pretty good as well uh just you know be excited about things be really you know genuinely passionate about things and once you have that sorted you can go you can do very well in whatever you want to do